Yes, yeah, so nice to meet you all. I am, okay, gotcha. Should have brought my laptop. Um, I am Kirsten Brewer, president and CEO of Hydrograph Clean Power. We are a Canadian publicly traded organization. Our operations are in the US, in Kansas of all places. And we are recently, since the beginning of 2024, located here at the Geek. And we have had you know, a fantastic experience so far. So I'm sure this is not news to anyone here, but the ages of man have been defined by the materials that we have used. So when we go from the Stone Age to copper, bronze, plastic, silicon, we're now entering an age of nanotechnology, which will be defined by graphene. And I think the important thing that I wanna really point out here is in each age, you're increasing the energy that is used to produce these new materials. And especially with hydrograph for what we believe may be one of the first times, we are now making a very high value material for almost no energy. We have the lowest energy use in the industry, which is one of the serendipitous um, discoveries, which I'll go into in a moment. But really graphene is going to fundamentally change so many different industries. It is pure carbon atoms, it can go everywhere. Obviously we have amazing strength, conductivity, and this is such an exciting time, and I know most of you know lots about graphene as we're here at The Geek, but it is really fantastic to see the impact that graphene will have across these industries. So going into our technology, we have a patented de detonation synthesis. So very simply, we blow up gases and we basically rip apart the molecules and all of the carbon that is in these carbon-rich gases that we inject into these steel chambers they get ripped apart and they recrystallize into 100% crystalline graphene that is also 100% sp2 bonded. This uses virtually no energy as it is an exothermic reaction. Acetylene is our primary feedstock that we're using, but we have all hydrocarbons under our patent. And so it brings a lot of energy with it. It's a very volatile gas. Acetylene is normally used in welding. And so if you can see, I know it's a small photo, but these black chambers, we pump in the gases, we have a spark firing from an electrode, and that really starts the entire reaction. Our waste in that is syngas. So all we use is acetylene and oxygen, and then the byproduct that we have is syngas, which is a commodity gas. So we effectively produce a very high value material, and then we have a commodity as the only waste that's generated in this system. We do believe that the temperature that we achieve when we ignite this reaction, it goes up to 2,500 Kelvin, which is the temperature of a cold star, kind of an interesting fact. But we do think that this is what gives us the crystallinity, the purity, and really the performance that we get from our graphene. We have a very unique graphene type. It is, of course, turbostratic. We're truly nano, 20 to 50 nanometers. And it performs very, very well. And we do think that, you know, all of these features, acetylene, C2H2, there's really nothing else in it beyond carbon and hydrogen. So we have a very pure resulting material. And we do believe the temperature does have some effect on the process and, of course, on our end result. So while it's simple in theory, of course, managing a supersonic detonation has been um, quite a feat. So this unit, which is approximately two meters by two meters, can now produce 10 metric tons annually. We are scaling this up and we are building additional units. We can build these units in a matter of months. Um, again, you know, very minimal energy use. And ideally, with a centralized facility, we can collect all of this syngas and divert it back to whatever um, gas company or chemical company we might be loosely partnered with. Um, we are, as I mentioned, currently producing in Kansas. We are looking to scale up within the U.S. We are also looking at the U.K. and Europe as well. So we are um, growing quickly. We have some fantastic performance results that I'll go into in a moment. Um, yes, and I think that's what I wanted to mention here. And so to dive into our energy, you can see the chart here on the right what we call the detonation synthesis, has a very, very low energy demand. And this is, of course, much lower than anything else that's really on the market. And if you think about whether it's graphite or methane or these other feedstocks, any endothermic reaction is 
of course, going to ensure that you need to input either a lot of chemicals or energy into that system to get to what would constitute graphene to be very few layer. <laughs> and so as mentioned, we have no chemicals that we're adding, the energy is very low, and there are no greenhouse gas emissions as syngas is a commodity. And so I'll go into a bit more of the data in the next slide. So our target markets, and I have left on the um, you know dollar values of these market size as an indication that these are huge, huge areas that I think you know one company, as we're a smaller company, cannot tackle on its own. And I'm going to go through some of these um, data points with all of these sideline benefits that you get with sustainability. But I do really want to point out that the best results that we get are always with blends. And I really think the future of nanomaterials and nanotechnology is being collaborative and cooperative and seeing does this work well with carbon nanotubes? Does it work well with carbon black or potentially other graphenes? And some of these uh, results that we've had have been in partnership with other graphene companies. These are such, such massive markets that no one company can really tackle this on its own. And when we look at these net zero aims that we have in sustainability, measures that we really need to achieve as a society, it's going to take a lot more collaboration, I think, than what companies and governments have currently been doing. So diving into this, you know, when we're looking at lubricants and granted it's a little bit less sexy than some of these other areas, we can reduce where by 80%, we have a 70% increase in lubricity. And what you're gonna see is you're not only going to see a greater increase in the life cycle of that lubricant, which is of course very beneficial when you're thinking about less waste and disposal, but if you're looking at the sideline benefits here, machines are going to be running more efficiently. You have this thermal transfer property and that's less wear and tear on every unit. You can have an increased life cycle, not only in the lubricant, but of the unit or the machine that you're operating on as well. And this has lots and lots of potential benefits when you really add this across industries. And to go and give another example with composites. So we, um, we have some conductivity gains. Um, we do have a 14% improvement in thermal conductivity. We've generated about 18% uh, tensile in PET. But the important thing for sustainability is we have a recyclability improvement as well. And when we're operating these units and when we're going through blow molding or extrusion, the units are actually operating faster with this lubricity that we get with the improvement of adding graphene into these materials. So again, all of these benefits that we see, it's not only just looking at the material, it's these efficiency gains that you have in the actual production of the material. And then when you look at the life cycle of the material, including at the end waste and disposal, and of course graphene being just carbon is a non-issue when we are looking at recyclability. When we're looking at coatings, the big issue that I think many companies have touched on is, you know, marine coatings is an excellent example. You're not only creating a high performing material, but current solutions are very toxic and very polluting. So the more that we can bring nanomaterials into some of these solutions, the better it is going to be not only for net zero, but for the overall health of the environment and sustainability measures. Concrete, I think this has been touched on many times. So of course we get some pretty fantastic performance improvements. And this is a great example of where hydrograph material alone at a loading of 0.03, we can on average improve the strength to about 15% compressive strength. But when we had add different nanomaterials in and when we do a combination of hydrograph material and graphene oxide, we can pass 30%. And this is a really, really strong performance gain. And it's also better for the concrete user to have a wired, wider variety of graphene materials that they can be utilizing. We can um, increase the cure time. There's a lot of additional benefits to concrete and obviously being a massive uh, carbon emitter, being able to potentially decrease the amount of concrete that we're using in any given project without having a decrease in strength is of the utmost importance. And then of course, energy storage you know, we have some great results with lead acid batteries. We have a 40% increase in charge acceptance. We can extend battery life. 
Um, we do have information and data on lithium ion, lithium air, zinc ion. But I think the important thing is when we're looking at energy storage devices, these are um, critical minerals that are a finite resource. The more we can enhance them with nanomaterials, we're prolonging what we can use. A lot of these materials and a lot of these batteries are not really recycled well. So the more that we can extend their power or use less of whether it's lithium or other you know, critical minerals, the better everything is going to be. And of course, if we can extend the life of the battery to work more powerfully and longer than it would be intended to, that would be, you know, absolutely fantastic. And again, this is a good example. The 47% increase in charge acceptance that we have with lead acid is a combination of hydrograph material and graphene oxide. And that's everything. <laughs> Uh, excellent question. Thank you very much. Uh, I do like the uh, the graphene age. Mm -hmm. I think it's born in Manchester as well. That's very good. But uh, yeah, excellent uh, demonstration of just how the nanomaterials in general is adding benefits and 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 data to go with us as well. Very impressive. Uh, ask questions from the audience, please. Thanks for a nice talk. Um, you have concerns about the impact of trading crude prices on the raw material and acetylene and. China being obviously one of the biggest exports of methetylene would that be say expect you guys later on the supply chain with crude price variations and supply from it? To to an extent, um, our process is efficient enough that the the prices aren't a huge difference, but realistically, so the photo there, and I think this is an excellent question, that is utilizing the cylinders. So we want to move away from that and we want to locate next to acetylene production, which would have much much less fluctuation in pricing. Right. Uh, uh, we are working on that now, but that can be quite an extensive study. Everybody. <laughs> Any other questions, please? Okay, that's good. Uh, you're working the acid battery, so mm -hmm. you know that the darkest day that the that we have had a lot of interest, um, none that I can publicly disclose now. And of course, it's a it's a very old technology. It's a, a heavy commodity. So there is a lot of price sensitivity similar to the concrete market. But with these improvements, you could almost argue that it's not really a lead acid battery anymore. You can kind of push it into a different category, which we've seen a lot of interest in. Pete, did you have a question? Oh, I thought, yeah. Mm -hmm. First time you've seen, yeah. Yes, and I think that's an excellent question as well. Because we're synthetic and because we have a gas phase reaction, we have exceptional consistency. Every time, not only for the graphene, but the syn gas, every time we've scaled this up and every time, even on the same unit that we turn the machine on, no matter how much time has passed, we produce exactly the same thing. So the syn gas is extremely pure and it's been the same every single time. And I think you know, as we grow for the right partner, that could be a very interesting part of the of the narrative. Okay, thank you. Finally, more question. Great, thanks very much. Good, great.